Good morning YouTube, my name is Anthony, this is Paul Meadow Prepared, and today we're going to try something new and completely different. This is going to be a new segment I'm going to start on Wednesdays called Warrior Wednesday Spotlight. And in this spotlight we're going to talk about people, whether it be military or civilian, that have gone above and beyond in the or need to survive. Whether that be in combat, out at sea, some sort of uh, uh, situation that's required them to survive in a way to help my viewers and myself realize that you know there's things that are bigger than ourselves and there's situations that you just need to be overcome to uh, you know survive so with that being said we're going to start off with since I'm a marine we're going to start off with a marine named Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalom now being in the Marine Corps this is one of those things that's hammered into your head when you're in boot camp but if you're outside of the Marine Corps you probably have no clue who he is so let's go ahead and uh, enlighten the rest of the, the population so John Bassalom was born November 4th 1916 in Buffalo New York he was the sixth of ten children. Uh, his father immigrated from Italy, and when he was two years old, his family moved to Raritan, New Jersey. He was a high school dropout, got work as a, as a caddy. So he wasn't quite doing it for him, had to go somewhere else, decided that uh, he wanted to be in the military because he wanted to get away from uh, New Jersey and kind of do something. Well, he didn't get his wish because he was kind of moved one state up to Fort J, New York. Well, that wasn't much the, what he was looking for when he wanted to escape, but as fate would have it, they transferred him to a unit in Manila, Philippines. So he spent the rest of his time in the United States Army in Manila, Philippines, gaining the nickname Manila John, probably because he did some pretty uh, questionable things out there, partying, troublemaking, fighting. That's what he was known for. That's what people in the military know for back then. So, hey, wild child. Well, after his tour in the Army, he got out, decided to become a truck driver, but it was still in the Great Depression. So... As fate would have it, things weren't working out for him, didn't get that sense of adventure he wanted, so he went back in the military. This time he joined the United States Marine Corps. Now, this is 1939. He got stationed down in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Was down there until the outbreak of World War II. In World War II, come have it, December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. December 8th, we joined the, the war, and Sergeant John Bassalone was moved to the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, and was seeing combat in Guadalcanal. Now, Guadalcanal is a island in the island chain of the Solomon Islands. This is a very strategic point for the United States because the United States needed this island chain as a place to uh, refuel and land bombers and all that stuff. Was actually, what we were looking for was an airfield called Henderson Airfield. Now, for two months, the Japanese wanted this back. They, they dedicated a force of 20,000 uh, Japanese soldiers to get this back. They were scouting the lines, all kinds of fun stuff, trying to find a weak point. Well, their weak point was Sergeant John Bassalone's uh, machine gun nest perimeter side. And they dedicated a regiment of 3,000 Japanese soldiers to try to overtake this airfield back through his perimeter. What they were not anticipating, though, was the the instinct and survival instinct that he had to survive and win. Now, wave after wave, come starting on October 23rd, 24th, 1942, they obviously attacked at nighttime because you don't want to attack in the daytime uh, to get this airfield back. They attacked his perimeter. Now, this is also in the tropics. While it's raining and muddy, had people had malaria, horrible conditions, and pitch black at night. So, for three days, Sergeant John Bassalone and his Marines repelled wave after wave of enemy Japanese that were trying to overtake his position. At one point, the Japanese had bombed or mortared and grenaded his uh, machine gun nest that's next to him, taking out his Marines, so he had to actually take his machine gun from his nest, one of his machine guns, run over there, the Browning 1917 uh, machine gun water-cooled, and man that station to repel that particular attack. He did so, succeeded, and had another you know, nest open for uh, repelling the assault. So, for three days they went back and forth doing this, him going back and forth between nests, clearing uh, malfunctions for his junior Marines, changing out barrels, getting ammunition from ammo dump, running it through the jungle, unfriendly territory. He was credited with 38 kills, many of which with his 1911 sidearm, which he was killing Japanese at night in pitch black at arm's distance. Absolutely incredible story of survival. Did this for three days, like I said, and on the third day he had re you know reinforcements arrive 
to find that out of what was it, 12 to 15 Marines he started out with, there were only three survived, one being uh, Sergeant John Bassalone. So, for his courage, his bravery, and his just absolute will to survive, the military and the, the president decided to give him the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, he was given the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions on Guadalcanal, and I will read his citation for you now. For extraordinary heroism and conspicuous gallantry in the action against enemy Japanese forces above and beyond the call of duty, while serving with the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marine Division in the Lunga area, Guadalcanal, Solomon Islands on the 24th, 25th of October, 1942. While the enemy was hammering at the Marines' defensive positions, Sergeant Bassalone, in charge of two sections of heavy machine guns, fought valiantly to check the savage and determined assault. In a fierce frontal attack with the Japanese blasting his guns with grenades and mortar fire, one of Sergeant Bassalone's sections with its gun crews was put out of action, leaving only two men able to carry on. Moving an extra gun in position, he placed it into action, then, under continued fire, repaired another and personally manned it, gallantly holding his line until replacements arrived. A little later, with ammunition critically low and the supply lines cut off, Sergeant Bassalone, at great risk of his life and in the face of continued enemy attack, battled his way through the hostile lines with urgently needed shells for his gunners, thereby contributing in large measure to the virtual annihilation of a Japanese regiment. His great personal valor and courageous initiative were in the keeping with the highest traditions of United States Naval Service. Now, in 1943, when he returned to the States to get his medal, he was just... they. Military had used his celebrity status. They they liked the fact that they had a celebrity so early in the war, and they were going to parade him around as a uh, salesman for war bonds. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Captain America, you know what war bond salesman actually is. It's basically getting. Uh, it's not like today where they make sales or they just go into debt to to fund wars. They actually had to sell war to the public by having public buy war bonds. So that's what he was doing. He actually had to go around state, city, city, uh, states and cities to raise money for this war. Uh, he requested several times to return to theater because he, you know, missed his brothers in combat and was denied. They actually tried to make him a uh, commissioned officer and he uh, said, no, I ain't no officer. And they tried to give him an instructor role and he said, no, nah, I ain't no jazz jockey. Uh, what a man, right? So he, after his war bond, after he stopped doing war bond sales, they put him into Camp Pendleton where he actually met his wife. He settled down a little bit. Uh, Lena May, Riggy, they got married July 1944. However, upon several times trying to return to theater, he was finally approved uh, to go back at when he was assigned to 1st Battalion, Charlie Company, 5th Marine Division for the invasion of Iwo Jima. Now, this was in February 1945. Went back to Iwo Jima. Being a senior Marine at the time, Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone led his Marines on the beach, Red Beach 2. Now, a lot of junior Marines didn't know that it was first time in combat or they were very inexperienced, so they were actually trying to hide behind rocks on the beach. You can't hide on the beach because there was a blockhouse with a Japanese machine gun firing down on and picking them off. He would, the, the Marine he was, didn't even try to take cover, just went around getting his Marines off the beach. Get the F off the beach. So, he went over to this blockhouse and he took it out single-handedly with grenades and composition B. Once he destroyed that blockhouse, they were able to get off the beach. Getting on the, off the beach, they were also bringing in armor, some tanks. Well, in order to get the tanks on the beach, they had to clear way for this, uh, all the landmines that were out there. So he's trying to navigate through landmines. He was hit, unfortunately, by a mortar shell. This mortar shell was uh, Japanese fragmenting tile, hit him with shrapnel, and he died of his injuries on February 19th, 1945, at 28 years old. The Navy awarded him the Navy Cross, making him one of the most decorated Marines ever, still to this day, because he got the Medal of Honor, the Navy Cross, and the Purple Heart for his bravery. Uh, shortly after his death, the United States Navy commissioned the USS Bassalone after him. It was a Gearing-class destroyer in 1949. He also has the hometown of Redding, New Jersey, named a football field after him, a park after him, and uh, stat he actually has a statue of him holding a machine gun, which you'll see now. He's also buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Now, the reason why I wanted to get this story out is I want I think everybody needs to hear some stories to try to keep them moving forward. If you've had a bad day or if you've had a day where you feel like you can't make it, you know, you can't go forward, it's one of those things where even this is in combat and it's several 10,000 miles away, uh, the fact that he was able to survive three days 
with no sleep and no water or no food to survive his ordeal with the Japanese on Guadalcanal, being the hero that he was and then wanting to go back in combat with his brothers should be a, a story that everybody can kind of relate to in terms of just persevering and survival. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I uh, look forward to next week. Uh, I'll be having another one, just the same, same style. So uh, with that being said, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Share it if you would like anyone else to know about Sergeant John or Gunner Sergeant John Bassalone. And subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you all later, okay?